Good morning and welcome. Thank you for being here. I will call the Paulding County Board of Commissioners work session for June the 26th, 2018 to order at this time. And Brian, if you bring me that list, silence any devices that you may have and we're always glad to have Sheriff Gulledge with us, uh, other elected officials. Help me out here, Lonnie. We are ex extremely glad always to have uh, Chaplain uh, Tommy Leonard with us. He's one of our own, Director of Recycling and um, many other responsibilities. But he will lead us in our, our prayer, stand if you're able, and then our pledge to the flag. Well, good morning, and, and thank you once again for just such an honor and a privilege any time to be able to pray for my, my brothers and sisters in our county. But Franklin Delano Roosevelt was quoted uh, is saying, I ask our people to devote themselves in continuance of prayer as we rise each new day and again when each night is spent, let the words of prayer be on our lips. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we humbly bow before your almighty hand at this time, acknowledging that you are the one and only true living God. You are the master of all creation. You are the sustainer of life. You, Father, and you only are worthy of our praise. And, Father, your word in Romans chapter 13, verse 1 says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. And, Father, we thank you that we have been blessed to live in a land of freedom that has been abundantly blessed with natural resources and beauty. And let us always remember that we are simply stewards of these blessings and we should manage them wisely. And thank you for allowing us to live in a land that has an established form of government. And God, we lift up our leaders of our nation, state, and local government to you, asking that they would seek your wise counsel when making decisions that affect our lives. And we pray as the upcoming elections approach that you would install godly individuals into these positions. And, Lord, we pray for the citizens of our nation. Let us come together, Lord, as Americans and show the world that we are compassionate, that we are concerned, we are strong, even under the most difficult of times. And, God, we pray for our families. As our families go, so does our nation. And, Father, we need strong, loving, and God-fearing families to lead our nation forward. And Father, I lift up our first responders to you, my brothers and sisters in public and safety, asking that you protect each of them as they serve our county and also our county employees that serve our citizens. Father, they truly are positively Paulding. Father, I do want to lift up Michael Justice and Tabitha Pollard to you this morning, our county employee brothers and sisters that have experienced loss. Father, we just pray that you would comfort them in the days to come. And thank you again for this day. And may we rest in your presence today and forever. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit that we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for the blessing, Chapter, uh, Chaplain Leonard, very much. The uh, June 14th session minutes and the June 14th, 2018 board meeting minutes are available for your review. Under our positively paulding this morning, uh, we have a little uh, piece here on the farmer's market that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Hello everyone, my name is John Grant and I'm here today at the Dallas Farmers Market. I want to invite everyone to come out and be with us. Come get your fresh fruits, vegetables, and uh, pecan pies, fried pecan pies. I guarantee you're going to love them. And there's something for everyone. We will be running through October. We're here every Saturday from 8 to 12. And uh, folks, they can find everything from their locally grown fruits and vegetables. We have crafts. And as we said, we have uh, lots of baked goods, fried pies, fresh cakes. Uh, fresh bread, so anything that you're looking for, you're going to find here at the Dallas Farmer's Market. <laughs> Would you
currently have about 18 vendors here and it is continually growing each and every week but we are always in need of other vendors if you are interested go on our website and you can pull up the application you can drop it off the day that you show up at the event or you can email that back in it's $25 for the year there is no weekly fee for it and we're also looking for corporate sponsors that is what is allowing us to be able to have all of the vendors here and not charging a weekly fee so if a corporation or a small business is interested for $250, they can sponsor the market for that day. And if they are ag related or anything to do with conservation, they can set up their booth, give out their literature, promote their, their business, and we would love to have them. You can also follow us on our Facebook page. You know, everything is, is there, it's available. And uh, we, we would just love to have everyone come out. I guarantee you, there's something here for everyone and everyone will have a great time. Hey, I'm Donna Eberhardt from Pauline Fine Art. And this is Bruce Henry. We have been painting the mural for 10 days, approximately, although the prep work was months yeah, in advance. Was, was the to make it. <laughs> we were approached by the tourism department, which is a part of the Pauline Chamber of Commerce, to uh, paint a mural for the new farmer's market. So we had a contest within our organization, and members submitted drawings which all were accepted because they were so good. And we were able to form this actual beautiful conglomeration of artwork. The chamber backed us, the tourism department, the farmer's market, the city, the parks and recreation. We've had volunteers from the chamber. It, it's just been a great community project. And we are so proud of how it's turned out. We had about 12, 13 members that showed up to paint, bare paint donated all of the paint. Home Depot gave us $50 for supplies. The farmer's market contributed everything else we needed as far as supplies go. So we just provided the manpower and the artwork That's awesome. Good job, Austin. That footage. Uh, as Sheriff Gulledge makes his way up, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this Public Safety Appreciation Award presented to Lieutenant D. Norris in recognition of outstanding service to her community, presented by the Pauling County Board of Commissioners this 26th day of June, 2018. So this is a special time. Good morning. Thank y'all for allowing us to do this. I got a letter that I'd like to read that somebody wrote for D. Uh, me and D goes a long way back. We've been here all of our life. <laughs> 500 years, it seems like. Uh, this letter was sent to me by Captain Karen Rich. She said, I'd like to nominate Lieutenant D. Marsh for the Public Safety Award. She's been with the Sheriff's Office since March of 1990. Most of her time has been spent with the Dairy Unit as a supervisor over our school resource division. During this time, Lieutenant Marsh has also been very instrumental in helping start the Cots for Kids program. She's been with the Family Alliance, formerly the Meth Alliance, a longtime member of the CASA program, and many other programs that helps children and families, all while raising two outstanding children of her own. Uh, I've had a little bit to do with them. I coached one of them, and we watched them both grow up. We was friends when she first got pregnant, so we've been, we've watched all of our kids grow up, so it's, it's all a big family with us. Uh, she's in constant contact with the school board and administrators within the schools, as y'all can tell from the last couple of years. She's been extremely busy. Uh, her job is to ensure the safety of the students and even assist them with developing policies and protocols for the school emergencies, and we've had several of those over the last couple of years. We've had her, uh, had it handed to us here lately, so. She was recently the, a guest keynote speaker at one of, the, one of her past D.A.R.E. students' first presentation as a D.A.R.E. officer. She taught him D.A.R.E., and now he's in the military and he's also a dare instructor himself, so he invited me to come back and be one of his guest instructors, so she was all silly about that and got to go out of state. But <laughs> it, it's a good thing when you when you touch a kid and when they grow up, you see that something you've done has turned out good, and Dee's touched many, and I appreciate her for that. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Dee's job is increasingly tough, dealing with a large number of schools, a growing student body, and being short-staffed. 
Lieutenant Marsh doesn't let that keep her down. She goes out with her officers and works side by side with them in the schools after school and after school programs. She pushes beyond the duties of her job to connect with officers and their families. She goes further than any supervisor she know, that I know on a daily basis. She is passionate and dedicated not only about her job, but also to her officers. She's a caring and passionate supervisor, a remarkable deputy, a terrific friend, and an inspiration to all of us that work with her. I've had the wonderful pleasure of working with her the past 25 years and hope to continue to do so for many more. Thank you, Captain Karen Ridge. And I agree with everything she said. Dee has done a phenomenal job for us. She has stepped up. She goes above and beyond continuously, and I appreciate her for what she does. I wanted to recognize her today, and thank you all for allowing us to do this. I'm going to add a third uh, announcement. We don't have a real long meeting today, I don't think. And this would uh, be to recognize the Keep Paulding Beautiful board once again, three months in a row. I see that Robert's here. And uh, it's the third month in a row where our litter index has gone down. And I know all the guys and gal up here on the panel uh, you know, are, are so interested in, in that litter problem that we've had in the past. You want to say anything, Robert? Yeah. because the county looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's the best numbers we've had. Mm -hmm. It dropped to 1.30 from a 1.39. Now overall, you'll have to actually go on the website, www.keeppaldingbeautiful.org, to look at it and see how we look at the numbers, but it's because of what this group has done because of the way the county looks. So thank you. Thank you, Robert. Mr. Carmichael, I'd like to, uh, say something about that I'd like to thank the citizens and this board for supporting the extra mowing that we do that DOT's brought to us over the last few years um, you know that cost it costs money cost taxpayer dollars the extra litter pickup that's been done and um, it's it's been amazing when you're out there driving the roads and you see it happening and the crew we have right now the contracting crew that we have doing it just does a great job and uh, they put a lot of effort into the weed eating on the side of the road the extra uh, trash pickup I mean they they really work hard at it and we we couldn't do it without this board's approval but we couldn't do it without the taxpayers and I think it's one of the most important things that we do with giving that first impression to our county and we have come a long way with it and I just like to say thank you to the Board of Commissioners the all of our staff, our citizens. We've actually had some good positive emails, uh, but I've actually had a lot of uh, citizens stop me and say, hey, thanks for what's going on. The roads look so much better. So thanks to everybody. And keep Paul and beautiful. We appreciate what you guys do, and it's a great effort. Thank you. Under invited guest, I'm going to ask uh, our director of the uh, animal control uh, to come forward and to actually do the invitation for someone that we would like to recognize today. Eileen Culberson, thank you for all you do out at the Animal thank Control. You. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today I have the distinct honor of introducing a man that has helped spay, neuter, and vaccinate over 6,000 animals in this county since 2009. 6,000 over. 
Recently, I reached out to him to discuss the trap, neuter, vaccinate, release pilot program for community cats that we just launched a few weeks ago. We discussed ways to fundraise and make this program a success. He offered to help in any way that he could. As of today, we have trapped, neutered, vaccinated, and released over 30 cats. With today's presentation, we will be able to help more people and cats in our community. At this time, I would like to introduce the founder and director of Friends to the Four and Pitbull Rescue and my friend, Jason Platt. Jason Flatt with Friends of the Full Lawn Pit Bull Rescue, located here in beautiful Dallas, Georgia. And uh, on behalf, on behalf of my board and uh, all my volunteers, my fosters and supporters, um, we'd like to present you guys with a check for $5,000 to keep that trap, neuter, and release program going. I think it's something that's instrumental. I think you guys took a, a big step in overturning those ordinances and making it possible. And um, I believe if you're able to help, then you should, and I think that we're able to help, so we're gonna. Um, this is just the start. My hope is that this becomes contagious and that other organizations in the area step up and uh, see the problem and see that there is a solution, and I think this is the first step in the solution. So I'm proud to be able to give you guys this first 5,000. Thank, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. Jason, we want to present you also with a certificate of uh, recognition. Best dog man ever. I think so. That's what they're telling me. Yeah. I'll be the argument on that. <laughs> and this says certificate of recognition. The certificate is presented to Mr. Jason Flat in recognition of outstanding service and contributions to your community, presented by the Pauley County Board. Dave, can I point something out here? I just, I just like to point something out. Jason's shirt says "Best Dog Dad Ever," uh, and this, this is, and if you know Jason, you're not going to ever disagree with that shirt. But um, Jason and his organization do a wonderful thing here in Paulding County. I've had a chance to get to know him um, over the last couple of years since I've been in this seat, and uh, it's been a real pleasure. And Jason, I just want to say thank you for putting your money where your mouth is when you, uh, when you talk about supporting programs to help to help communities and help the animals. Um, he, he, his focus is dogs, and this check is for cats, and I just want to point that out, and I, I, I do appreciate what you do. It's about the animals. Like I said, we've done this for, since 2000. We started our program in 2012 with 6,000 animals, and people are still knocking at the door asking for help. There's a need for it. So as long as there's a need for it, we're going to try to do what we can to help out. And just, just in the last six months, 1,186 animals have been. Step up to the microphone, Jason, and tell a little bit about that. Ron stole most of what I wanted to say, but you go ahead. Go ahead, Tony. This is your time, man. Go ahead. Uh, what do you want to say? I also got acquainted with Jason. I've known him for a long time, but I really got acquainted with him a couple of years ago. I went out and investigated his board. I talked to uh, our animal control people. I, <clears throat> I talked to a lot of people. I had reason to, to talk to people and try to find out about Jason and the work he does. I couldn't get one negative out of the whole deal. It's just been great. Uh, I don't know any other person in the world that does what he does. And I'm sure there are other people that, that, that does something along his lines. But Jason, truly, from my heart to you, thank you for what you do. Thank you. It means a lot to me. Um, like I said, 
there's a need for it. Um, last year, I turned to my board and I said, let's take $50,000 and help Baldwin County out and let's do a spay neuter program. And it was for dogs and for cats. We didn't discriminate. We're a pit bull rescue. I rescue pit bulls. It's the most hated breed out there. Nobody likes pit bulls. Dog lovers hate pit bulls. Um, so we're up against it. So, but I love all animals and I love the community that I live in. And uh, it was important. We took $50,000 and we allotted it just for spay neuter. And not just spay neuter, we vaccinated, we dewormed, we provided a heartworm test for the dogs, we did uh, rabies shots, the FBRCPs for the cats, the DHPPs for the dogs, because a lot of the people in the community couldn't afford to take their dog to the vet. We figured they're at a vet clinic, let's get them what they need. Uh, we also offered pain medicines and e-collars. So we spent a little extra on the animals, and I think it was worth it. Within the first six weeks, uh, West Georgia Spay Neuter Clinic called me and said, every appointment's booked up. They said $50,000 worth of appointments are, are booked up. So I turned to my board once again. I said, there's a need. So we took another $50,000 that we had allotted for our shelter that we're trying to build, and we moved that into our spay neuter account. Because we're not going to be able to rescue every dog out of the shelter or every animal, and we're, but we can try and help keep them from coming in. And if you don't agree what goes on in animal controls, people knock animal controls all the time. These people have a hard job. They don't want to kill animals. They don't want to see animals hurt. Um, they don't want to take in animals. That's not their goal is to fill their shelter. Their goal is to keep the shelter empty. And that's what we're trying to do. The best way to keep them out of there is to never let them go in there. And we're going to continue to vaccinate and keep the disease control um, at bay. You know, we're trying to keep the uh, simple vaccines save a lot of lives. And a lot of people turn in their animals because they can't afford them. And if you can offer that to them and you can feed them and you can help them out, I think it, you know, prevention goes a lot, a lot further. Um, and we're going to continue to do that. That's what we're going to strive for. Um, our goal is to continue to spay and neuter here. And our goal is to also build a facility within the county. We're currently looking for uh, some property. Um, we're trying to build a state-of-the-art facility for our pit bulls. Um, try to help out Paulding County as well as, I mean, we cover all of Georgia's. When I leave here, I'm going to Macon. I'm driving down to Macon. I'm going to go get a dog that was uh, involved in a dog fighting ring um, three years ago. She sat in the pound for three years for on a court case, and nobody else is going to take her, so I'm going to take her. And um, that's what we do. We want the unwanted, and we love the unloved, and uh, Paul is my home, so whatever we can do here, um, we're going to continue to do, and thank you guys for the opportunity and for recognizing what um, the group of people behind me, my board members, my volunteers, my fosters, and the people that support us do. I'm not, I'm not alone. I'm just, it's my idea, and I'm just blessed enough that people support what I believe in. And uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. We have no bid awards today. Under reports from communities and departments, uh, we're glad to have Sheriff Gulledge come back up and give us an update on his office. Hope y'all don't mind while I'm standing here. I'm gonna be out of line. Won't be the first time, probably nor the last. Uh, I always tell y'all about this county and how good it is to me that we all work together. Eileen Coverson is another example of that. I don't know that every time we have problems, it's always after hours or on weekends when nobody's around or everything's closed. I have never one time called this lady when she won't either answer the phone or call me back. Uh, I don't know how much she does on her own time, but my hat's off to Eileen. Thank you for the job you do in supporting us. Uh, we can't do it without them. Uh, she does a phenomenal job over it. I just want y'all to know that. Amen. Thank you. Now I'll do what I come to do. Uh, I give y'all all a booklet with all of our numbers in it. This is a sheriff's report for January through May of 2018. Uh, once again, we stay extremely busy. The sheriff's office during this time frame has patrolled 1,279,000 miles, uh, arrested 1,534 individuals. We issued 1,580 traffic citations. Uh, we had 26,460 complaints were answered in this time frame, uh, 2,281 alarms, 1,159 domestics. 2,362 subpoenas and civil papers were served, 2,184 suspicious incidents were persons or vehicles. Uh, as always in a bedroom community, we have a lot of theft by takings and burglaries and entering autos and that's still going on. If, if I can't do anything else and tell you to take your valuables out of your car, and please lock your car because it's a convenience thing. They're continuing to go into neighborhoods and people leave guns and computers and phones and money and pocketbooks and all kind of stuff in your cars if you would. 
either put your car to your garage where it was built for or at least remove your valuables and lock your car up. Uh, our guys performed 3,362 traffic stops, uh, 45 DUIs. Uh, we had 1,251 warrants cleared, uh, 667 juvenile incident reports, 187 of those were assigned, and 235 were charged. Uh, to go along with a little bit about picking up the litter, our, our inmate were down on our numbers for our outside inmates that we can actually get out and use. Uh, when the weather permits, they get mad at us because we're not out in the rain, but you can't put, put a truck and a trailer on the side of the road in Georgia red clay because if you do, you wind up stuck and cost us more money than we're worth. But the inmates picked up 273 bags of garbage on the roadways during this time frame. Uh, the detention center stays extremely busy. They booked in 1,745. Uh, daily average population at the jail was 236. Our transport unit uh, transported 3,086 transports to court and prisons. Uh, and that's about it. If y'all got any questions, if not, that book should have everything else that we've done during this time frame. But I appreciate y'all's time and thank y'all for allowing us to be here. Thank you for the update. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Gary. Thank you. <clears throat> also, our second report today is um, from a man we've uh, grown to love and admire, Mr. Kelly Comstock with uh, Richland Creek Reservoir Program, and he's going to give us an update. Thank you, commissioners. Um, I'm honored to be here today to give you a, a quarterly progress update for the Richland Creek uh, Water Supply Program. Everything's going uh, very well on all the different projects, and I uh, bring up a presentation here and sort of highlight some of the ongoing uh, construction activities. So uh, the, the first project we'll highlight is the intake that's being constructed at uh, the Etowah River uh, site. We're, our focus right now is the deep foundation that's going to be the base of the um, wet well where the pumps will be located. We've had a bit of a challenge over the past couple of months. As you know, we've, we've had a lot of rain that occurs. And when that, when that happens, um, Alatuna does regular, regular releases. It's at a full level, so when we get a lot of rain or anticipate a lot of rain, they let a water, lot of water downstream. And when that happens, the, the, the river can come out of its banks and was playing a little bit of havoc with our, with our ongoing pile installation. So originally the contractor was planning on doing the piles in a dry condition. They had excavated the shaft of the wet well down and their, planning, their initial plan was to have a dried in condition to install those piles, which extend 140 feet below the bottom of that slab. However, the ever increasing uh, frequency of, of the river coming out of its banks created an issue where they were continuously being delayed. Um, so they, they changed configuration to where they can install those piles in a wet condition and they're moving forward and so now there's not any impact associated with those, with those conditions. So they've got about 50% of the deep, deep foundation piles that are in place now and they're on schedule to get the rest of those in place um, over the next month or so. Once that's done, they can pour the base slab and everything will essentially be dried in and it'll allow them to, to come up above the, the working surface. Um, they're also working on the electrical building uh, that's a separate structure that it's obviously at a higher elevation, so um, they're on, on track with that work as well. A lot of activity at the water treatment plant. Uh, all of the structures are, are uh, well under construction. Um, this is a recent aerial from the site there. You can see the, the roofs are on most of the facilities. Um, the large clear well tank is now in place. All of the underground piping and electrical work is, is in place, um, and they're finishing work up on all of the various structures within the um, interiors of the buildings. They're doing framing, duct work, and, and piping installation. They've completed about 95% of the overall concrete work that's associated with the water treatment plant and have completed all of the hydraulic testing of, of, the, of the filters in the various buildings, um, various basins. They finalized the installation of the granular activated carbon, which is one of the final treatment process steps. And Greystone, who's providing the power to the site, They've installed the major runs coming off of 61, and they've actually energized their transformers. So now as they finalize, as PC Construction, the contractor finalizes the installation of all the equipment, they can do all the startup and test out um, from an electrical and controls uh, perspective. The large clear well was also completed recently. That's a, a large six million gallon uh, domed tank that will, will hold all of the water once it's treated. and it's and, it holds it to get pumped down uh, into, into Dallas here. 
and they're completing final grading around the site as well. So this was a major milestone for PC construction being done with this, with this tank. It also passed all the, the uh, leakage tests that, that were required. They've also been focusing on the reservoir intake. Uh, if you recall the last update, they had, they had put that bridge across and now they've poured that top slab and are actually working on the framing uh, for the structure. So they've installed uh, various control valves that will be connected to the pumps and they've put the exterior steel framing for the upper pump station building and they're getting ready for the architectural precast panels that will come in um, to be able to finish off that, that facility. And they've begun the pipeline installation that will convey the water from the reservoir here up to the water treatment plant uh, for treatment. It's been a tremendous amount of work at the dam and here you can see, um, let's see if I can get an arrow here. Oops, sorry. Get a pointer, no. But in the center of the, of the um, picture there, you can actually see the base of the dam starting to come up. Uh, it's, it's been elevated to a depth of, or a height of approximately 60 feet from the lowest portion of where the, where the dam uh, is located and there'll be an additional 60 feet of backfill that occurs as well. So right now the dam is about mid, mid height and they are starting um, the, the final critical process that is installation of the slurry cutoff wall and these are some of the um, large pieces of equipment that are used to cut down into the center core of the dam and place a continuous concrete curtain. If you recall, there's a, a grout injection that took place that goes 80 feet below the dam, and then they're installing these panels that are also about 80 feet deep uh, that go down into the center core of the dam. You can see the large number of, of um, pieces of equipment that are currently engaged by Brad Pole Construction um, on the earth fill that's taking place. And it's a fascinating place to be right now. There's a lot of activity and on a daily basis you can th see things change around you. So it's, it's very exciting. Um, the phase one finished water pipeline project is continuing to make um, a lot of progress. They've completed 10 of 23 different bores that have to take place under roads and under creeks. They've complete, or they're working on a major one right now on, on uh, Punk Pumpkin Vine Creek. Um, so that's a focus point for them right now. And they've installed about 20,000 feet of the 56,000 um, that, that's part of this contract. So they're over uh, a third of the way done with, with overall construction. And they're beginning work on the second phase pipeline as well. That notice proceeds being issued. So once again, um, those of you that travel along 61, you recognize that there's, there's regular lane closures that, that take place. We want to thank the public for um, their consideration during this period. Um, the, these closures protect the public as well as the, the working contractors. Um, the closures happen during the daytime and they try and minimize the wait time to, to three to four minutes during, during a lane closure. Um, so we ask again, please drive safely and slowly around, around these construction periods. And if you want to get regular updates on, on where the actual shutdowns are taking place or lane closures are taking place, um, there's an RCR Water Facebook page where that's posted on, on a regular basis. So overall, all of the contracts are going well. A lot of great construction activity taking place. Um, the rain can, can slow us down at times, but um, overall, we, we still anticipate meeting the schedule and, and having water uh, coming directly from Richland Creek Reservoir uh, by 2020. So with that, that's a current update. And I'd be happy to ask or answer any questions that you might have. Just one. Yes, sir. Still on budget, not on schedule. <laughs> I know that question. <laughs> We're in good shape. We are. Yep. Yep. On budget, on schedule. Yes, sir. Everything's Below good. budget and on schedule. <laughs> We're yeah. on budget and on schedule. All is good. Yeah, all is very good. Okay. We appreciate the okay. updates, appreciate the work, appreciate the transparency. It's just a great project. We'd love to have you come out and visit the site. It's a great time. So if you have some availability, let us know. We'd love to give you guys a tour. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to resume our tours now that the rain has slacked up a little bit. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. We have no one who signed up for public participation on agenda items. The consent agenda has uh, four items. Number one, the Paulding County Sheriff's Office requests the uh, Board of Commissioners to retire uh, or surplus Deputy Barry Walker's service weapon, Glock 21 SF.45, serial number TYN859, 
upon his retirement. Number two is to clear 105 lineal feet of bookshelving units as surplus and approve the donation to the West Georgia Regional Library System. Agenda item number three is to uh, the approval of the contract between Paulding County, Georgia and BM Jones Company, LP, to purchase approximately 112 acres for $3,500 per acre in the third district, third section of Paulding County, Georgia, along Raccoon Creek. The chairman is authorized to sign all documents necessary to complete the closing of this transaction with the closing date expected to take place within 60 days. And number four, the nomination of Chris Wheeler as the post commissioner's appointment to the Paulding County Board of Ethics with a term ending December 31st, 2019. I would uh, ask any of the commissioners that would like to move any of these items to regular business. Um, so that we can get some further explanation uh, for public benefit, could we move number three, please? Yes, sir. Under old business, we have none. Under new business, number one is discuss action to authorize the chairman uh, to enter into an agreement with uh, Georgia DOT to uh, fund the traffic operations quick response project in excess of the uh, $200,000 provided by Georgia Department of Transportation located at the intersection of State Route 120 Buchanan Highway and State Route 120 Connector Scoggins Road. Mr. Jones to report. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I said uh, this is a request to enter into an agreement with GDOT um, to put quick response funding for left and right turn lane construction at the intersection of uh, 120 Buchanan Highway, 120 Connector Scoggins Road. The turn lanes will be on Buchanan Highway themselves, left and right turning off Scoggins. Um, right now there are no turn lanes at the intersection. Safety and capacity is somewhat hindered by that fact. We approached GDOT a couple years ago to uh, program a project at that intersection. They agreed that it was a good idea. Um, so the county agreed to do the engineering and GDOT would do, uh, would actually program this as a quick response project. At this time right now, the project has increased to a cost of where it exceeds the $200,000 limit. So GDOT approached us and asked if we would be interested in taking over the administering of this project and then also putting in the additional funds needed to um, construct the project. You know, I think this is a, a good project. Um, if we do this, we can construct this in a much faster timetable um, than if we wait for GDOT to do it. So um, it's my recommendation that we enter into this agreement with GDOT to construct the project and this project is in post two. And I'll take any questions and answer if I can. I think it's a much needed project and uh, I'm thankful that they're willing for us to facilitate it and uh, I think it'll help out in that area a whole lot. I, I appreciate it. Appreciate y'all working on it. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, one thing we mentioned that the cost right now, um, our engineers estimate is 341200 mm -hmm. so we're looking at around 141000 of um, SPLOS funds that can be put towards that project. Thank you, George. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. New business item number two is discuss action to approve the sub award agreement with the Nature Conservancy in the amount of $150,000 for the supplemental funding of the construction cost to replace the existing bridge at Raccoon Creek Road over Raccoon Creek with Pauling County providing a total of $115,000 match. Um, again, this is an agreement um, to enter into with the Nature Conservancy for $150,000 to replace the existing box culvert that was built in 1981 with a freestanding bridge. Um, as you go there right now, the, actually the water flows underneath the box culvert. It's a flow on top of it like it's supposed to, obviously. Um, the box culvert has spalling in some places. Um, and with the way the water flows right now, the Cherokee darter and the Attawa darter, which are in that creek, um, it, it restricts their flow. So um, 
this was something the Nature Conservancy um, approached Paulding County with, and um, again, they will you know, give us $150,000 towards the replacement of this um, culvert with a new bridge, and as part of the agreement, Paulding County will provide a match fund of $115,000. Um, this project is in post four, and again, I can answer any questions if you have any. George, this was discussed some time back, was it not? Yes, sir. Yes, and we agreed that it had to be done. Yes, I think everybody was in agreement that this was, a, again, a, a good project. Um, it'll help the fish, pa fish passage through the area. Um, it'll have a nicer, wider roadway through there, um, just a better overall structure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you. Thank you. New business number three is discuss action to authorize the purchase of CIS software from Tyler Technologies in the amount of $53,700. And Mr. Will Lyons is going to handle this one. <coughs> this item is actually um, purchasing uh, services from Tyler Technology for CIS software, which is traditionally used with utility billing. We currently use the Tyler software, but they are referring to it as UB Classic now. Um, the the $53,700 is for services related to the conversion process of using the existing data in UB Classic and converting that into new tables for the CIS program. It is also for training UB staff, um, so they're familiar with the product and can use the functionality of the software. Tyler recognized that the UB Classic program was lacking some of the functionality that our clients needed. So instead of trying to cram all the updates and version codes into the existing product, they did a total rewrite of it. They're not charging us for the software that's covered in the maintenance uh, price that we always pay annually. Um, but this uh, new version of CIS will allow the staff and the citizens more functionality into the program that they both both sides want. And uh, Lori is here to answer any additional questions that I may not be able to answer that you have, might have. I'd like to thank uh, Frank Baker for, he st uh, implemented the, the, the uh, agenda prep day that we have. We had last Friday and uh, we got to sit in and Will explained it to us. The chairman was out of town last week and uh, so you answered a lot of my questions in and, and Lori was there and department heads were there. So Frank, I appreciate you doing that. Uh, that kind of gives us more of an update besides just the backup material that we get on our iPad. So um, I appreciate very much. Lori, did you have anything to add to it or? Just to say that the, the software will allow us to improve our efficiency internally so that we can accommodate and serve more customers in our growing customer base um, but also to improve service to our customers in the way of notifications and um, and and being able to do things directly that today we have to we've had to implement workarounds um, within that classic program more yes, more efficiency if, if I might add one note when we do ask for um, enhancement to the software or uh, procedure um, updates from the current UB Classic application, we're told quite often that's available in the CIS program. So in my opinion, they're going to stop adding functionality to the UB Classic program and focus all efforts on CIS. So it's just a matter of time before CIS will be the only platform that they provide and they'll be forced, we will be forced to go to it sooner or later. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Will. New business item number four is the old consent number three. I'll read it again. Approval of contract between Paulding County, Georgia, and BM Jones Company, LP, to purchase approximately 112 acres for $3,500 per acre in the third district, third section of Paulding County, Georgia. It's along the Raccoon Creek. The chairman is authorized to sign all documents necessary to complete the closing of this transaction with the closing date expected to take place within 60 days. This is uh, something that uh, I think all the commissioners are very excited about. 
uh, Pawnee County is rich in green space. And uh, as Commissioner Davis and I talked before the meeting, we didn't want to just uh, have that as a consent agenda item without the further description. So Frank, thanks for your, your words here. Uh, good morning, I appreciate the opportunity to come up and talk about this. I'm, good morning. I've been excited about this uh, for a long time. I, um, I brought in a pine cone that sits on my desk and I'll show everybody. This is a, actually a small one from that region out there. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. But just to give you an overview, and this is from the Montane longleaf pine, which um, it, it grows out there in that particular area. This is um, a real important purchase for us. Um, it continues a partnership that we have with the state, state of Georgia, and that's uh, DNR, um, and also Kennesaw State University. Kennesaw State University is doing a lot of work out there education-wise on the Raccoon Creek, uh, and there's a couple reasons for it, and I'll, I'll, get, I'll um, demonstrate that in just a second. Also, as a partnership with the Nature Conservancy, which um, um, George just mentioned a few minutes ago, um, dealing with the bridge over Raccoon Creek. Um, and they've been instrumental working with um, myself and Scott and, and the board and trying to make this land purchase happen in the last few months. And also uh, the partnership that we have locally with the school district. Um, we have some incredible stuff going on with the school district and this particular area and KSU. There's uh, some of the high schools are working directly with uh, KSU and um, there's some real important work being done out there and it's really incredible when you find out about what they're doing to see that these are high school students that are doing the work. And they're actually extracting uh, DNA uh, samples from the creek. And uh, one school in particular, and um, I don't have the, um, really the background to talk about this, but I do know enough to make me dangerous, and that is to say that they buy, uh, one school has identified um, a, a DNA sample that's not on any database that's known. And so I think that's a real significant uh, thing. So my hat's off to, um, both the uh, local school district and KSU working so closely together. So I don't miss anything, I'll, I'll put my, uh, my, my readers on. So uh, this is such a biodiverse gem that we have. It's a valuable habitat for at-risk darters, which George had mentioned, uh, crayfish and mussels. Um, the stream is host to 43 native fish spe uh, species. That's incredible, 43, when you think about the famed Columbia River in the Pacific Northwest, has only 31 native species of fish. And that's right here in Paulding County. That's just incredible to think about. The uh, Raccoon Creek watershed is also home to the largest remnant montane longleaf pine uh, habitats in Northwest Georgia. And again, here's the example. And this is actually, again, a small pine cone. Uh, from that particular area over there. And the montane longleaf pine uh, ecosystem supports additional Georgia rare species like the squirrel fox and Bachman's uh, sparrow. So it's a very unique habitat that we have out there and we, we need to protect it. We need to, um, uh, to allow uh, education and folks to visit this area and see it uh, as, as it is in its state right now. If we lose it, it's gone forever. And so that's the important thing about it. And I, uh, I talked to Lori this morning, and I, I found a quote in a, um, and she's, she's smiling at me, from the U U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service article back in June 7th of 2017. I actually found this article in preparation for this morning. And they quote our very own Tim Pugh, who's with our water system. And he says, quote, people are blown away at how pretty it is. And he's referring to the area. It is one of the best kept secrets in Georgia. And that, that's true, that's absolutely true. So I just wanted to, I appreciate the time to give y'all a little background on it. Um, there's a lot to be said about the region and really to experience it, you gotta get out there and, and, and see it and uh, talk with the folks who are actually doing the work out there from KSU and our school district. So it, it's a wonderful place to be. And I wanna thank Lori for all her help. She's done a lot of tours for us over the last three or four months and we, we've had a lot of folks go out there and look at it. So. Um, again, thank you. Uh, I'll entertain any questions that y'all might have. I'd just like to say thanks to you and Lori and uh, looking forward to what all can happen out there in the future with our school system. And uh, no, no, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> no. Tony's over there saying post four, post four, <laughs> post four. That's what he's doing. But no, all the commissioners have been out that way. We've, we've uh, 
had the opportunity to go with you guys and hang out. And uh, it's just – it's no telling what's going to be able to be done through the state, Kennesaw University, through our local school system. I mean, this is something that's going to uh, just provide all kind of things for the future uh, education of Paulding County and uh, surrounding areas. So I'm looking forward to hopefully some other help from the state for us to move on and do uh, other projects there. So I'd like to thank the Board of Commissioners for moving on it and getting it wrapped up and taken care of, and I look forward to that that closing day. Well, thank you. It truly is a gem. I, as most of you all know, I, I'm an avid uh, cyclist, and I'm on that trail. Uh, in fact, I just passed 17 uh, or 7,000 miles a couple of weekends ago in a, about a three-and-a-half-year period on the trail. So I didn't really realize until about six months ago when I, I, I met some folks from Kennesaw State the Raccoon Creek, uh, that the trail crosses Raccoon Creek up near the tunnel. And when I found out about it, went out there, I was just blown away, as, as Tim said in his, in his article. So it is it's truly a gem. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's the conclusion of our regular business. We do have a requirement to go into executive session. Um, we have no one that signed up for non-agenda items. So at this time, I would entertain a motion that we adjourn to executive session for the purpose of real estate and potential litigation. Let me just ask a question. Do we need personnel? I don't think it's so. Personnel? It, okay. it's, it's pending and potential uh, litigation. Okay. So so that's all we need. I'll make the motion. Real estate. I'll make the motion to, for executive session for real estate and pending and potential litigation. Motion by Commissioner Davis. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Collette. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We'll adjourn to executive session.